Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome everyone to Friday Night Live. It's the 76th episode. We are honored tonight. We have special guests that will be joining us. Mufti Abdul Wahab will be my co-host. And uh, we've been eagerly waiting for our teacher, mentor, scholar of our country, of alhamdulillah, the ummah. Um, he'll be joining us tonight, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, the co-founder of Zaytuna and the president of Zaytuna. Hafizahullah, may Allah protect him, prolong his life. And it gave him so much more time in his space to contribute to the society from his writings, from his speeches, from his work, from his presence. And uh, honestly, we, as an American society, we have not valued our scholars, especially the elders of our community. Um, so we're so fortunate. I, I typically, I'm never nervous speaking in front of or being with another scholar because now, but Sheikh Hamza, he, he's like an elder to us. And, and I've already apologized to him before we even start if I say anything disrespectful. And I want to apologize to the audience that's going to be watching. Inshallah, may Allah give us the ability to value our, our ulama. Um, Sheikh Abdul Wahab will be joining us before we start. I'm going to have um, Hafiz Nur Huda, one of our students who is finishing his alim program in Chicago. Um, and inshallah, he'll be joining us for a beautiful recitation. And then we'll have a beautiful panel, a, a reminder discussion with our great uh, scholar, Sheikh Hamza. And Mufti Abdul will be also a co-host. So please welcome our Qari, our Hafiz Nur Huda. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa salam, Nur, kif al-hal, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, good, how are you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, good to see you, at least we're seeing you on camera. Bismillah, go ahead, we're, gonna, we're not going to hold yes. you back. Tayyid, jazakumullah khair, good to see you all too. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر أن الله أنزل من السماء ماء فأخرجنا به ثمرات مخ تلفا ألوانها ومن الجبال جدد بيض وحمر مختلف ألوانها وغرابي بصود ومن الناس والدواء وَالْأَنْعَامِ مُخْتَلِفٌ أَلْوَانُهُ كَذَلِكَ إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ الله عزيز غفور إن الذين يتلون كتاب الله وأقاموا الصلاة وأنفقوا مما رزقناهم وأنفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية يرجون تجارة لن تبور <تصفيق> ليوفيهم أجورهم ويزيدهم من فضل إنه غفور شكور والذي أوحينا إليك من الكتاب هو الحق مصدقا لما بين يديه إن الله بعباده لخبير بصير ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم 
تصيد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير <تصفيق> جنات عدن يدخلونها يحلون فيها من أسابر من ذهب ولؤلؤا ولباسهم فيها حرير ولباسهم فيها حرير وقالوا الحمد لله الذي أذهب عنا الحزن إن ربنا لغفور شكور الذي أحلنا دار المقامة من فضله لا يمسنا فيها نصب ولا يمسنا فيها لغوب صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله قاري نور جزاكم الله خير thank you for the beautiful recitation this part and every time you recite this beautiful part of the Quran it really melts our heart and we we miss you so much here in Michigan inshallah you are doing well in your studies and may Allah put barakah on everything you're doing. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to invite Mufti Abdul Wahab on and welcome Mufti Abdul Wahab. Alhamdulillah, Bajan. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Bajan. Um, I'm not sure who's excited, the audience or me. That's that's the only problem right now. I think it's uh, going to be too unfair. Both of us are very excited. We're here to learn from Sheikh Hamza. And um, we, 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 we read his work. We listen to his uh, teachings. And uh, America overall is very lucky to have a scholar to speak in the language that they can understand. And the West is very lucky. We're fortunate. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to value our time in the company, virtual company of scholars. So Mufti Wahab, please welcome Sheikh Hamza for us. Um, Jan, I think, you know, um, it goes without saying that um, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf does not need an introduction. Um, but for the sake of um, the session, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is all of our teacher. Um, he's have he's had a direct and indirect hand in Miftah, in uh, the work that's happening here in Michigan, in majority of institutions all across North America, and he obviously is the president of Zaytuna, co-founder. Uh, it's it's his brainchild, and um, I don't want to take too much time, but Jen, he's waiting there, uh, and I'm inshallah going to bring on Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh Hamza. How are you? How's your health? Yeah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Um, tr uh, trying days for for everybody, but alhamdulillah, I, I have uh, nothing to complain about. Alhamdulillah. Nahmadullah wa nashkuru. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, we are very excited, and you can't we can't hide our excitement for you being on our program tonight. Allah yibarak feekum, inshallah. I mean, I mean, all of us. And uh, may Allah keep you young and healthy. And in the books that you've done, and the books that you're writing, the articles that you put published and continue to publish, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your fingers, Amen. bless your heart, Amen. and bless the eyes and the ears that listen and read your work. Um, so Mufti Bohab, um, Sheikh Hamza, I don't know how many programs you come on for other institutions in the last year. Um, I know you came on for Imran Khan recently, uh, a few months back, but between this and, and now, have you been on any other virtual programs? Because you're very busy, yeah, I, I have, and I don't do a lot of, um, I don't do that much online uh, anymore. It's, just, it's an honor to be, be, to be just, the fact that you took out time for us, it's, it's, it's amazing. Allah, you know. No, no, it's, it. you know, look, my, everybody has areas of concern, and it's, it's part of what makes the world uh, extraordinary, is that people, people um sorry let me turn this off that people uh you know in the you know allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala says that humanity all of their endeavors are diverse 
and and that's part of the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you need all these different people uh, to be engaged in different things but arguably the most important of all things is education and so I will always when educational institutions contact me, even uh, from outside of our faith, uh, I'm very concerned about education because with education, there's a possibility of transformation. And without it, uh, there's an inevitability of really of jahiliyyah, mm-hmm. of just uh, the opposite of, of what... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended for us in, in, in creating us because we were intended to know him. You know, as Ibn Abbas said, Ma jinn he said, Illa you know, to know him. Mm-hmm. And ma'rifah comes uh, with education, both outward and inward education. Uh, uh, and, and, and so what you're doing is extremely important. It's a very difficult endeavor. Uh, it's, it's a mysterious uh, component of our of our species because there's so many different views about education about what it is about what its purpose is about what what the best ways to go about it there's a lot of different educational theories and so it can be very confusing but what we do know is that our species have has produced extraordinary works and these are the great works that our, our, uh, our different civilizations have produced. So if you, if you look at the Asian civilizations, they have extraordinary works. And, and I have a lot of uh, books from that civilization and I benefited from. Uh, right now, I, I've been rereading uh, uh, Musashi Miyamoto's uh, The Book of Five Rings, which is an amazing book on, on martial arts, but it's very applicable to the world in general. And, just, uh, yeah, just to cut you off, I hope you don't start fighting against martial arts because we don't want to keep you on the safe side. <laughs> uh, Sorry, go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. So, so, uh, and then, and then you have um, the extraordinary Indic culture that produced so many wonders. Ma- ma- mathematics really comes from uh, from that part of the world, and it moved into the Arab world, and then, and then. Uh, our our uh, ancestors, the Muslim ancestors, gave it to the Europeans, and then they created the atomic bomb. So you know, uh, we we in some ways we we have our own civilization to to blame for that because <laughs> there were a lot of scholars that said don't teach them math. I oh. think we actually had the ulama said the Christians come down to learn from us. We shouldn't teach them, you know, because they're, they're not going to use it for good things. <laughs> Sure. What, what was what was that in 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 in, um, in Greece that was something similar to philosophy? Like take this knowledge and we, it's whoever took this knowledge, it destroyed them. What's the background of that knowledge? Sometimes, well, philosophy, I, you know, the original meaning of it is a very beautiful meaning because it's uh, philosophia in Greek. It's uh, philo is love and sophia is wisdom. Some even say sophia comes from from that Greek word. I mean, that's one opinion. But, but it's a love of wisdom. And it came from Pythagoras, who, who did not want to be called a, a, a sophist, which meant wise person. You know, mm-hmm. sophomore in, uh, in, in, in our school system comes from two Greek words, uh, moros, which is stupid, and then sophia, which is wise. So a sophomore is like a wise fool <laughs> because they're, they're no longer a freshman and they think they know a lot more than they do. And, and so there was an understanding that a little bit of learning is a dangerous thing. So, so Pythagoras did not want to be called wise, but he, he, so he said, but I'm a lover of wisdom. So wow. he was the first one to use that term of philosophy, philosoph, you know, the, the lover of wisdom. In Arabic, it was termed, uh, you know, they, they called it hakim, mm-hmm. uh, which is a beautiful word because, as you know, I know you, you've all studied um, sarf. But in, in, in Arabic, that, that beautiful fa'il pattern is an active and a passive. So it's a, it's a recipient of wisdom as well as being uh, a giver of wisdom. Like, so, like marid, you know, marid, samir. Marid, yeah, same yeah. thing. So, 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 you know, philosophy 
is is a very important uh, aspect of education. And and unfortunately, one of the problems with the Muslims is they associate philosophy with one school, which is called the peripet peripatetic school. Imam al-Ghazali and his Tahafut al-Falasifa was only talking about one school. Wow. He was talking about a, a school that had some major problems in it because they came to conclusions through rational thought that were completely antithetical to our teaching, like the eternity of the world, mm -hmm. um, the, that, that there's no resurrection of the bodies, uh, that God doesn't know the particulars. So these things, he, he identified 20 problems in peripatetic philosophy, which, which was uh, the Greek philosophy of Aristotle. And, mm -hmm. and so, but the, but the methodology of the philosophers what was recognized to be very useful. And that's why Imam al-Ghazali incorporated it into usul al-fiqh. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is the first one to really bring the methodology of philosophy into usul al-fiqh. And that's why, as you know, there's a, there's a branch of usuli tradition that's called the usul of the mutakallimin, you know, the, the people that the, the, it's, it's, it's the people that are using scholastic tradition, logic, mantiq. I mean, it, as you know, the mustasfa, the first 40 pages is on logic. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something very interesting about, about Saudi Arabia. So in Saudi Arabia, you know, there were some of the ulama because of the early positions mm -hmm. and because you'll read, there's a lot of early positions in our tradition that are opposed to kalam, so they say whoever learns kalam becomes a heretic. And so people think that that's the kalam of the later tradition. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. They were talking about uh, the Mu'tazilite school, which was heavily influenced by peripatetic philosophy. And so later they, they recognized, look, there's tools that we can use here. And so they incorporated those tools. So these aspects of our tradition, which a lot of people, unfortunately, because they don't know the tradition well enough, um, they, 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 and then you have people that cherry pick, mm -hmm. so they'll give you, they'll write a book against Kalam and they'll have all these uh, scholars who are re very notable scholars in our tradition that we revere, who are telling you, beware of Kalam. Anybody who learns Kalam goes astray, this and that. That was all true at the time they were saying it, yeah. but as time passed, these tools were incorporated into the tradition. And so the later scholars recognize the benefit of these tools. So the, these, this is really important to, to understand because a lot of uh, people don't understand that. I mean, one of the biggest problems that we have today, we have an ossified tradition and, and, and it's, it's, it's a problem. The, the tradition always needs tajdeed, it needs, but it doesn't need uh, uh, ibtidat. It doesn't need like innovation. You know, it doesn't need, it needs renovation, not innovation. So the innovators bring things into it that uh, will alter it and distort it. Um, I think just, just froze for a second. Uh, uh, no, I can hear Sheikh Hamza perfect. Oh, sorry, me. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. So, 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 um, Kalam, uh, philosophy is very important. The method, and this way, Ibn Khadun, who did not like the philosophers, if you read the Muqaddimah, he didn't like the philosophers, but he said their methodology is the soundest of research methodologies. And he was very steeped in it because the, the scholastic tradition adopted it as a methodology. So usul al-fiqh becomes influenced by it. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the tafsir, everything, it's, everything is involved by Razi's work, it's just unbelievable because of that angle approach that he has. It's just... Yeah. It, it's, um, yeah, Razi is a great example. Imam Razi is a great example of somebody who who really just went so deeply into that methodology that he was able to find things in the in, in the Quran that nobody before him found. Sheikh, you mentioned something earlier about uh, education inwardly and outwardly, right? And the the the, the, the need of rectification. And um, for for us, I mean, the the, the title of the uh, of the program is the power of education. And how would we, as students of knowledge and as all the attendees and listeners, understand the inward education aspect and how that also is as important, if not more important, than the outward aspect of it? And perhaps you can shed some light on that as well. Well, I, our, our tradition, Bismillah, our tradition always saw that hand in hand with ta'lim 
and they might not have used this uh, term. I mean, it was used very early on, but this idea of like tarbiyah and ta'lim together is is probably a later iteration. But but the idea they understood that, and this is why they called the the teacher was murabbi. So they understood that a teacher is not just simply giving data or information. A teacher is somebody who is literally nurturing a, a seedling, which is the potentiality in the student. Now, the student, th there's something very natural in, in, in education uh, so that if a student is in the right soil, given the right uh, nourishment, knowledge will naturally grow in them because we all have the potential to know that it's part of our nature. It's part of our fitra. And the children are constantly asking questions when they're little, but that spirit of inquiry is very often driven out of them by drill, drill, you know, drill and kill by certain uh, pedagogical approaches that become very deadening to the soul. And that's why it's very important uh, for the uh, the teachers to to understand the nature of children, that children are at different stages. This kind of cookie cutter approach to education is very dangerous because some students are are ready for mathematics at a very early age. Other students are not. And wow. and, and 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 if the teacher doesn't recognize that, then what happens is a, a student will actually think they're dumb or they can't understand it. And then they, they there's a lot, like, like just mathematics is a really good example of that because there's a lot of children that get math phobia because math is introduced too early for them. And this is why in traditional education, generally math was not introduced until a child was about 10 or 11 years old. The only thing they did with math was rote memorization, but they did no abstract mathematics because the, the mind is generally not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And so like in Mauritania, I'll just give you an example. In Mauritania, they don't do any math till in the traditional madrasa, the mahbara, mm -hmm. until they're about 15. Oh, okay. Sheikh, I, I, then, I, think, I, think, I think we got the, I got the math phobia, Sheikh. Because... And, and it's, it's tragic because yeah. math is so important. Yeah. And, and wal hisab. you know, Allah gave us um, the heavens one of the reasons for it is so that we could determine time and learn mathematics. And so math is extremely important. And, and your, your, your mind is divided between qualitative uh, aspect and quantitative. So we're in the world, which is all quantitative, but our perception of the world is qualitative. So we, we recognize beauty. You cannot quantify beauty. Beauty is experienced. It's a qualitative experience. You can't quantify it. You can't determine how much beauty there is in 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 a, in a great work of art, or 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 on the human face, or or or, or in a Persian carpet. Uh, but, but you can experience it; it's qualitative. But you can measure that carpet. That Persian carpet could be measured. You can determine how much red dye was used in it. You can. That's all qualitative, quantitative. And so, human beings have both elements, and a fully educated human being is somebody whose qualitative and quantitative aspects have been realized. They're, they're, the potentialities that inhere within the soul have been realized. And so uh, it's very important for the, the teacher to understand because a student can, the light bulb goes off and you can see it in their faces uh, when the light bulb goes off. It's, you can see that light uh, just, and it's quite stunning. And that's why it's wonderful to teach uh, like third and fourth graders because the intellect is just beginning to 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 come into its maturation, and 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 they're able to uh, to discover things and 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 have that wonderful experience of learning something for the first time. It's it's quite stunning to see that. But if things are introduced too early, then the child shuts down and actually thinks that it's stupid. Um, brilliant people. I mean, I'll just give you an example of, you know, it's, it's famously noted that they, they literally thought that Albert Einstein was retarded that because he was such a slow learner. Wow. And, and I'll give you an example. My own son who 
when he was about, I think, six years old. He was in a homeschooling, uh, but it was part of the, uh, the school. We were schooling him in home, but, it, but they had a person from the, the, the state system who came and assessed uh, is California. So, um, and I, and so they called me into a meeting with, with uh, my wife and we went and they said, your son has a learning disability. And I, I was like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> and, and of course they rolled their eyes at that point. You know, I'm the parent in denial. And they said, no, 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 he's, we've assessed him and he's not where he should be. And I, and I said, first of all, I'm a teacher. And I can tell you that that son of mine is of my five sons. He's the smartest. SubhanAllah. And, and I said, it's not that he has a learning ability. It's that he's, he's, he's ahead of, he's already thinking about things that are beyond what you're trying to, you know, what you think he should be knowing now. Wow. I said, those things will click for him because I know from the questions he asks me that he's, he's thinking at another level. And they just literally thought I was crazy. Wow. So, so that, that child, I would not let them put him into a special. And, and by the way, they get money for every child they identify as a special needs child. So there's an incentive in these school districts to identify children with learning disabilities. But if you tell a child he has a learning disability, you're gonna harm him psychologically. And I did not want that to happen to my son. So I, I totally refused. So that boy in a, in a, a high school class of 300 graduated with a 4.0 4 straight A at a really competitive uh, high school, all Asian and South Asian people. He he got into University of Chicago. He did a degree in the cl in classics, studied Latin and Greek, and and uh, graduated with with you know a stellar um, GPA from a top uh, American university. But had I listened to them, he might have ended up thinking he was really stupid. Unbelievable. And so it's just, it's important that people develop at different levels. Some people have their intellectual awakening at, at the age of 25. Hmm. So, so we don't know because it's, it's just, we're, Allah has made us all different. So some people will show great brilliance early on and other people, it's very slow development. And then the other thing we know in, in, with, with neuro, neuroplasticity that the brain actually gets more intelligent. So for instance, Sayyidina Omar said, Ta'lam al-Arabiya fa innaha tazid al-aqal. It will increase intelligence by wow. learning Arabic. And the more, the more you learn, the more intelligent you will become. And so this idea that people are fixed in, in, in intelligence is, is an idea that has been refuted by modern cognitive science. And then you know the fat the fat is real, like Allah is fatah. And he can open up. It's like the man that I, you know, and I, I saw this uh, extraordinary news about a man who was a bricklayer and he got hit by a brick and he became a mathematical genius. <laughs> it's a true story. And he wasn't smart, he was like dumb. But he got hit on the head with a brick. And it opens something in his brain. <laughs> and he's true. able to do really complex math. Oh, and that's it's right. all there. It's all in us. Like the capacity is, our capacity is unbelievable. Human so, being, language, the fact that we're communicating right now, the type of syntax that we're using just to communicate is so complicated. It's so difficult that computers cannot mimic it. And, 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 and these are supercomputers that have immense um, uh, capacity for, for this kind of logarithmic uh, type of um, programming. And yet they cannot imitate, like they, the biggest uh, difficulty they have in a a AI is particles and prepositions, what are called haruf al-ma'ani in Arabic, which are the most difficult thing in Arabic. 
to learn because it's so nuanced. Mm -hmm. Language is very nuanced. And then idioms, what do idioms, where do they come from? Wow. But, you know, idioms are so bizarre sometimes. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. Sheikh, so when, when my brother. Like if I was... ask you, how, uh, how do you do? Like, what does that mean? How do you do? We just do. How do I do what? <laughs> Yet it's a way of introducing. <laughs> So, how about, if you say, how about if you say in Arabic? It makes more sense, don't you think so? Uh, like, how would you say it in Arabic? Like, كيف الحال? No, how do you do is how do you do. That's that's an old-fashioned way of introducing yourself. Mm -hmm. How oh do goodness. you do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh, my brother always says that, to me, That's from what? Pygmalion, from uh, Bernard Shaw. It's a Victorian English. Zakhla Khair for clarifying that shit because our faces showed that we didn't know what it was, but you clarified it for us. Zakhla <laughs> But my brother always says to me, when you were younger, I dropped you on your head. So maybe that's where my fatah came from. Or yeah, no, but the fatah is real. And so listen, there are people that have, like uh, Abdul Dudin al Iji is one of the smartest people in our tradition, and, and they thought he was not intelligent. Uh, when um, was young. That, that really proves, Sheikh Hamza, what you're saying is people who limit themselves have greater potentials. And the aspiration of learning should never end. Never confine oneself. Like, oh, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm someone older, I can't, I can't do it. I can't memorize the Quran, so that doesn't mean I can't learn tafsir. I mean, it's possible that you can have this fatah even at an older age. Um, I think we have Mufti Abdul Rahman. Yeah, so, Mufti Abdul Rahman, Sheikh Hamza, does not join Friday night. Uh, he's our elder brother, my elder brother, Shabullah's younger brother. Uh, but because you're on, he wanted to come say salam. He wanted to join as well. Uh, and we don't see him. Sheikh Abdul Rahman was telling me that he's a fan of your dad's poetry. And I didn't even know your dad did poetry, Sheikh Hamza. No. Uh, my dad didn't do a lot of poetry, but my dad wrote a, a book on uh, Aruf in English. He And it's very funny because he did it in a traditional, more of an Arabic style. Uh, he did a sharh of a didactic uh, poem that was written in Elizabethan English on on what they call um, the royal rhyme, which is the the one that Shakespeare uses most. So did you, did that, you inherit did you inherit, inherit that skill from your dad too? Is that is uh, poetry? Yeah, my dad taught me a lot about poetry. Shikhamza, yeah. Shikhamza, there's that once lecture of yours that. I mean, when I went to when I when I first went to memorize Quran, I was nine years old, and my teacher, <clears throat> my teacher told. Uh, so my older brother is right on top of me, and he went and he was kind of forced to go to the school. So his face was all grumpy, and you know he got, he had the fatah later in his life, <laughs> and so my, my 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 teacher looks at me, my older brother, and he tells me to read. So I'm all excited. I read. My older brother he says read, and he doesn't want to read. So my teacher looks at both of us and he says. This younger brother of yours is going to become Hafid before you, Alim before you, Mufti before you, get married before you, and have a kid before you. So he just had this prophecy like instantly, right? And um, and I did become Hafid with Alim. But he, you know, he told me when, was, when we were getting married, he said, "Come on, man, take it easy on me." So he got I got married one week after him. Otherwise, everything else is in place. So he told me, he asked me how old was I? I was like, I was nine years old. He says, "Okay, I want you to become Hafid while you're nine. And he had this tactic, he would, make, he would make me memorize long Persian couplets, like Wumi and Saadi. And you gave a speech once, long time ago, about what is in poetry. And um, I'm not sure if you remember that speech. But I, I do remember. Yeah, it was in Santa Clara. I, 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 wear, I, I think I was wearing a Mauritanian. I never watched the video, actually, because I think I heard the audio. And, you know, as you were talking about education, there's like, in, from that speech, there was like that one thing, you said a, a poem of Shakespeare that I memorized from that speech. And then you mentioned something about your father. Your father said that the best poem is a poem I'm reading, <laughs> right? Like about Shakespeare, he said that. Yeah, yeah, the best poem is a poem I'm reading right now. And in that speech, you mentioned something that about education. You said something about like passion. You're like, you know, very few people are afforded the extraordinary delight of having a great teacher. Like most of us have to suffer the mediocrity of, I think it's a passion less passion less people teaching words that emanated from the hearts of deeply passionate people. Can you wow. expand on that? Well, I, if you look, all one of the gifts of scholars, Fakhruddin al-Razi uh, says that knowledge 
is is something that we inherently want to share with others and this is why a child when 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 they when they discover something new they often run in in an extraordinary ecstatic state of excitement and they oh come look at what i found and they want you to see this thing that excitement of discovery which in arabic wajada which means to to discover to find is also means to be ecstatic and so there, there's a type of ecstasy that occurs. I mean, there's a famous uh, story about Archimedes who discovered displacement, like why boats don't sink. Um, and apparently he was in the bathtub when he, <laughs> when he discovered it um, because there was something in the, and he saw the water being displaced and, and he had that, it's, he, he started shouting Eureka Meaning mm. I discovered, I found it, but, you know, because he, he obviously was working on the problem. And apparently he got up naked and just ran down the street shouting Eureka. <laughs> That's the Greek story of it. Um, hopefully one would not uh, do that. But that state, which is called a shapha in, in traditionally, um, is something that the Prophet ﷺ talked about finding God. And, and he said that Allah loves the man of Toba. Um, and then he used the analogy of a man who loses his camel and despairs and thinks he's going to die. And then he finds it. And then from his ecstasy in finding his, his uh, camel, he shouts, Allahumma anta abdi wa na rabbuka. Akhta'a min shiddati farihi. He, he made a mistake from his ecstasy. And so what... The, Knowledge is about discovery. It's about finding new things. It's about learning new things. It's about having insights about things. And when, when that happens, it's, it's quite extraordinary because, uh, you know, you can be thinking about something for a very long time. And then, I mean, I'll give you an example in, in poetry because poetry is very interesting. So uh, what, probably the most famous poem in America is uh, two with two rows diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not be one tra uh, uh, be one travel. Two words, two rows diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one travel long. I stood to the end of the poem. Um, I actually I read a book on that poem. Wow. And uh, and I was so disappointed with the person's interpretation of it. <laughs> and and I've thought a lot about that poem. Um, and so one day I was literally walking out in the woods and I was thinking about that poem. And then I realized what that poem was about. I, I really had a just that awakening mo mo moment of realization. It was quite extraordinary because I realized that the, uh, the key to that poem is, is in the last stanza where he says that, uh, he says that, uh, Two rows diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one that's traveled by. And he repeats I twice. And 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 what I realized was the book is about free will. Hmm. That, wow. that this is the gift that God's given us, that we actually can choose the two paths. Like Hadainahu Najdain. You know, hmm. we can, but you have to be conscious. To make that choice you have to know that it's 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 you, you that you are a moral agent and that you have to act and and uh and most people don't do that they're in the default setting of just going through life without being conscious of the choices they make and and so that anyway that was my uh I'm there, and there are other interpretations that are possible for that poem but for me that was a very a powerful moment of realizing that. Another example of that, I was walking with my son once and, uh, and I said, isn't it funny how w once you start walking, you don't really think about it. You just one foot follows the other. And, and, and so we were just thinking about walking. And then I thought, you know, it's, it's very interesting, the will, you know, willpower. Mm -hmm. And that walking is, is very much related to there's a willfulness in walking. And then I thought about like a child when they walk, it's like the first willful thing they really do. 
Wow. And they and they work at it so hard and they do it before they can learn to speak. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so we're we're a walking creature. You know, Ibadur Rahmani Ladina Yamshuna Alat Abdihona. You know, Allah used Meshi, you know, Bashir and Mashaina Bil Vulam, Bin Nura Tam Yom al Qiyamah. You know, that Meshia is a very important uh, aspect of our being. Mm-hmm. And and, and so I started thinking about the irada, the, the whole idea of will and walking, that that's the first willful thing that we do. And wow. then, so I, you know, I went back and I looked up, uh, I was looking up uh, will. I wanted, I was thinking about will, you know, irada, arada. Well, the root word is rawada. It's rawada, hmm. right? Which is road, right? So, so the word road is from Arabic, probably, because... In Arabic, the ra'id is the one that goes out walking in search. Yarudu, raudan. So he goes out looking for water. And so, so, and the Prophet said, Ashabi yadkhulun alayya ruwada. They come to me as ruwad. In other words, the sharia is the road to water. So they come to me for the water of life. Fons vitae, you know, the water of life. And 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 then and then the Wayahrujuna Adillah, they leave as guides. Subhanallah. Because the Ra'id, you know, is the one the Prophet said said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, The Ra'id does not lie to his people where water is, because it's a matter of life or death. And 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 Akhira is a matter of life or death. So the Prophet said, he is the Dalil because he went and he found the water mm-hmm. of life. God sh- revealed to him the water of life. But he was a seeker. <laughs> you know, he was a seeker. The Prophet was a seeker. He was going to the cave of Hira. And that's why will- willfulness is so important. And the pa- we call the path you know, the spiritual path, the inward tarbiyah, mm-hmm. the inward education in our tradition was traditionally called tariqah. So you mm-hmm. had the sharia, which was the outward journey, and you had the tariqah, which was the inward journey. And of course, it becomes very corrupt and decadent, and you have all the problems that go with, um, in the same way that the outward becomes corrupt and decadent, the inward also has all those problems. But it doesn't, the, but that path is there. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, La yazalu amrul ummah. So Amr al-Ummati is mustaqima. It's it will remain there. The Amr is there until the end of time. So that path is always available. It's the irada. And that's why the murid becomes the murad. The Allah one Allah. seeking becomes the one sought. Mm-hmm. So you, and that's part of the problem with modern Sufism. Is that the murid is no longer murid Allah, it's murid al sheikh. Wow. And and that's why there, there's a whole corrupt um, relationship between disciples and their teachers that's that, that's very unhealthy. Because a true teacher is 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 a true teacher is a guide. They don't want you to 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 become them if they're a true teacher. They don't want you to become like them. They don't want you to to imitate them. They don't, and it's very often students want to do that. They want to dress like their sheikh. They want to, but these are temptations that have to be resisted. Wow. Because you cannot lose yourself. It's very important that one of the most beautiful things about the Prophet's companion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is they're all unique individuals. Mm-hmm. They're not cookie cutter people. Mm-hmm. They're completely unique, amazing, fully developed human beings. Abu Bakr is not Omar. Omar is not Abu Dhar. Khadija is not Aisha. Aisha is not Hafsa. They're really amazingly unique people. Despite the fact they were all imitating the same man, but that's his vastness. Mm-hmm. Because he, Sallallahu oh. Alaihi Wasallam, he, he contains multitudes. When he made Hajj, he made he made Hajj al-Ifrad, he made Hajj al-Quran, he, he made Hajj al in the same Hajj. 
Subhanallah. Hamza, in, uh, you know, in that lecture that you gave, you mentioned this uh, poem of Shakespeare. Can you, can you, can you, I mean, I, it's just my curiosity. I'm coming here as a student right now. Um, you mentioned it's, it's like, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the expense of spirit in a in waste, waste of, of shame is lost in action, so action, action, and lust, action yeah. lust is perjured, yeah. murder is bloody, full of blame, full of blame. Savage, savage extreme, extreme rude, rude, cruel, rude, not to trust, trust. enjoyed no sooner but despised, despised straight. straight, past reason hunted and no sooner had, past reason hated as a swallowed bait. On purpose laid to make the taker mad, mad, mad in pursuit, in, pursuit in possession. So had having in quest to have extreme a bliss in proof and proved a very well before a joy proposed behind a dream. Behind the dream. And the last two lines, all, all this, this world well knows, yet, yet none, none knows, knows well. well. To shun mm. to, yeah, leads to this hell. Yeah, yeah. To, to shun Great the heaven home. leads men to this hell. Can you, you mention a hadith about that? Can you mention that? It was a beautiful. You said before, this before. Oh. Before you guys mentioned the hadith, I I, I think we need to, we need a sharah of this poem a little bit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, he's he's talking about the state of lust, mm. and even when he begins at the expense of spirit. So spirit is, you know, Shakespeare loved puns. So there's a double entendre because spirit means ruach, but it also meant semen, you know, because they believe that they believed in this idea of the homunculus, you know, that the, the, there was a, the, the little human was contained in the semen. Mm -hmm. So the expense of spirits uh, is, is wasting your semen in lust. So it's the, you know, the idea is that a human being in a state of lust is, they've lost their minds. Wow. And, 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 and then they'll, they'll do crazy things in that state. I mean, the date rape is a major problem in American universities. And date rape is, usually occurs when the couple gets into what they call heavy petting, you know, where, where they're, and, and, and so men, once they're in that state, they're no longer in a kind of rational mode. They're in more of a, Imam Shafi'i famously said that all of knowledge is lost between the two thighs of, of, uh, of a woman. You know, what he meant, you know, the, in fact, in Arabic, I mean, uh, the, the, in Arabic, mehbal, which is one of the words for a woman's private parts, means the place of stupidity, like the habal, you know, ahbal is somebody stupid. And so the idea of people that are in a lustful state, they've lost their intelligence mm. and they're not thinking rationally. And that's why Islam guards and protects because lust is important as, as a human uh, phenomenon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended that we procreate and you can't do that without desire. But that mm. desire has to be um, elevated and it's elevated through, uh, through marriage, through intimacy uh, that involves care and concern for the two partners, that it's not simply um, onanistic, uh, it's not simply pleasure for pleasure's sake, that there's a mutuality in the relationship. And so, you know, I think what he's saying there is really that this is a way men go astray and then, you know, it's, it, it, before it's like this amazing thing and afterwards it's just a dream all you have is a memory of something that it's it, like all pleasure it's completely ephemeral mm. and, and just like i mean you can eat uh you can eat, it's amazing how people can consume food purely for pleasure and then they have indigestion for hours afterwards so they suffer for, because of this Desire, Temporary pleasure, yeah. and and lust is like that, because one of the things about mausia is mausia is always followed by remorse, and obedience is always followed by joy. Mm -hmm. So before a joy proposed, you know it's something. Oh, I'm going to get some pleasure out of this. It's going to be joyful, but afterwards, it's you know no sooner it had it's despised it straight. Like you have, and then it's oh. What what was the person thinking? So he's really talking about that state of masiya, 
you know, that, that uh, which which has always been a problem in Western culture, partly because of the mixing of men and women in ways that Islamic civilization did not encourage for that reason, because they, they did not want a breakdown of that relationship. And there's a very important book by Unwin, who was a, um, a professor at Cambridge. He wasn't a, a, a religious person. He was an anthropologist. He wrote it in 1934. It's called Sex and Culture. And what he shows in that book is that when, when sexual um, licentiousness is released into a culture, it'll, be, that, that it'll destroy it within three generations. Wow. And that, and today's culture is all sexualized. It's completely sexualized. And yeah. that's why they're not producing any high culture. There's no high art. Because he shows how you, it's the sublimation of those appetites that allow for high culture to be produced. Once you, once you, uh, once you fall into licentiousness, both gluttony and lust, you lose all of the, uh, the higher um, desires for, for uh, great poetry. I mean, who, who are the great poets today? Mm. Rappers. Who, who are the great yeah. novelists? Seriously, who are the great yeah. novelists? Because, I mean, I, if you read the great novelists of Russia, wh where are the Dostoevskys? Where are the Tolstoys? Where are the Turgenevs? You know, mm. Where are the Rumis? Where are the Sadis? Where are the Hafiz? I mean, we had so many of those type people. Where are they now? So, so once this culture falls into appetites, there's not much left. Um, That's why the Prophet said, If you can yeah, exactly, and and that's that is that's it. I mean, th those are two. They're so important in in uh, in the, and then you know, I mean, Plato thought the circle was like the perfect form, and so the head is like a circle that God put on on the body. And, the, and, and, and so the heart is like the, the will, the reason is here, the will is here, and then the appetite is the stomach and the genitals. So he put reason on top, and mm. then he put, you know, the, the mm -hmm. will to be guided by reason, and then the appetite to be guided by uh, reason and will. Wow. wow. So, 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 you know, once, once you invert that <laughs> and, and put the stomach and the genitals, that's why Imam... Sh Ghazali wrote that beautiful book in the Ihya, Kasr al-Shahwatayn, Breaking mm. the Two Desires. Because if you can control food and if you can control the genitals, all the other desires are easy to, uh, to control because those are primal urges. Especially and thus we have, this we have the fasting concept and, and oh, so many things of taqwa, ghadd al-basar in our, in our culture and our tradition. Right. Well, also, I mean, now pornography is ha wreaking havoc on young people and, and young men in particular, but apparently a third now of the viewers of these things are women. And I know it's a crisis in the Muslim community because uh, I've read the stats on it. So I don't want to take it off the topic of poetry, but I really wanted to ask while you were speaking about uh, the rational aspect and the tedbiya aspect of acceptance and obedience. Um, it is, I, I feel like this is a befitting question to someone like yourself that when it comes to us as Muslims, there's always times where we're hoping to accept something, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense. And you've spoken quite a bit about this in different lectures and even in the Oxford Union speech, someone asked you a question that was sim similar to this and you give them a powerful response. You can, you can find it online. But where, where, where does it happen so that a person just accepts? Is that, is that the will of accepting or is that, where does that come from? Or is it... Are you talking about accepting things that maybe you don't understand in, yeah. our, in our religion? Correct. Right. No. Well, I mean, it's called submission. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, uh, you know, they talk about the great resignation out there. We have to have the great resignation internally. Um, there's things, I think there's going to be things in, in Islam and, and in any tradition, there's going to be things that will trouble you uh, in reading the books. You're going to come across things that trouble you. Some of those things are contextualized. Mm -hmm. So some of the rule, rules about the ima in the books of fiqh that you've probably 
uh, come across, um, I found them very troubling. Uh, but it's, it's important to remember that the fuqaha are lawyers. I mean, I think people forget that. The fuqaha are lawyers. Wow, yeah. And, and, uh, and not all of the fuqaha were deeply spiritual people. Hmm. They had great fuqaha that were really, they were fuqaha, they were lawyers. So they find loopholes and they find things. I mean, I found, for instance, abortion, because I, I wrote a paper on abortion, and I want to expand it, because abortion to me is a very important issue, because it, it, it gets at the crux of the modern world, um, this, this idea that uh, people can simply choose to... Um, to eliminate something that God uh, has has uh, initiated, and you live in and you live in California, so you have the far liberals that are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, and abortion is really a, a very never in the history of Islam has abortion been permitted anywhere in the Muslim world, uh, and people say, oh well, Imam uh, uh, Ar Ramli from the Shafi'i school he permitted it. Well, why then do the Shafi'i countries? Uh, outlaw it. Why is it outlawed in Malaysia? Because every fat, every medhab has shad fatwas. Mm -hmm. There's no medhab that doesn't have shudud. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why traditionally you have to follow the mashhur of mm -hmm. the medhab. What was the dominant opinion? You can't just pick and choose. Islam is not to pick and... If, if I cherry pick my religion I could pretty much do whatever I wanted. You could, any of the drink, marijuana, drink, any... marijuana, <laughs> uh, you know, pretty much fornicate, pretty much anything you wanted, because you'll find opinions for everything. But but what is the normative tradition, and that and that's why it's very important for people to understand that. So Imam Ramli, when I looked in in that section, it was about Ima. He was talking about Ima. Somebody asked him about aborting a, 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 a concubine's child. So that was the issue. It wasn't about free women. It was about Ima. And that's I found that consistent in the, in the opinions that it was permitted. And, and I could, you know, this idea, and most of them, even the, what, the few handful of people that did permit uh, interrupting pregnancy, it was before 40 days mm -hmm. because there's a khilaf, as you all know, it's it's a weak opinion, but science substantiates the weaker opinion today. And that's what mm -hmm. I wrote in my article on abortion, uh, that the ruh comes in at around 40 days, not at 120 days. And I think there's a much stronger argument yeah, for that. Sheikh Hamza, even sorry, a weak opinion, but if you when you say, uh, and the scholars who have taken another multiple different sunnahs, that means all that equal to 40 days, not four months. Exactly. That, yeah. that, that's the other opinion. And that, was, that, that opinion has been substantiated by modern embryology. Yeah, and it so, wouldn't make sense. Four months would not make sense. But also, also, brain activity starts at about 40 days, which that to me, is that consciousness? Is that the beginning of consciousness entering into the, into the, uh, the fetus? And we know that from inception, life starts at inception. That's biological life. It's also a unique, genetically unique individual. It's not a, the mother. It's a genetically unique individual. And, and Allah said, Awalam tukun nutfa. Weren't you a nutfa? Like we, he's saying you were a nutfa. He doesn't say, you know, yeah. Right? Correct. No, it's you were a nutfa. <laughs> Sheikh, you know, the, the, before, you know that, um, sorry, Muftah, Muftah Abdurrahman, go ahead, sorry. I, I want to ask, but you go ahead. I was just saying the concept, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ that concept today in secular world, in the modern world, it, that, that tasneem, the submission that what you started off with, it's so uh, colluded, it's so, it's, it's so compromised. And that's where, Sheikh, you know, 
sometimes people like you can answer some of these speculations at a higher level. Well, people want to, today, modern people want to reformulate everything in their own image. So they want to look anachronistically at the past. So they're judging slaveholders for something that was completely acceptable 200 years ago. I mean, that just people did not see anything wrong with slavery. Very few people did. Right. So, but the other concept, even with the Quran, this is so much you more. You can't impose your sensibilities on previous uh, peoples. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so it's very important that. It, I mean, I I would argue that I think Islam, one of the goals of Islam was to, uh, to eliminate slavery, and I think mm -hmm. the Muslims unfortunately didn't take it seriously enough. Um, and slave traders were odious in, in Islamic history. They, they, were not, they were not liked. Even in America, slave traders were considered the lowest of the low. Like they oh. were really considered horrible human beings. Um, so the slave trader was always odious in every, even in the Roman, if you read the Roman histories, slave traders were always seen as very low people. Um, but slavery was was very much part of the pre-modern world. Islam, I like many things, Islam is a is a tradition of tadrij. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it tries to eliminate things um, slowly. But I actually think one of the, the wisdoms behind slavery was that it would reduce um, war casualties. 100%. Because, because when people are fighting and they know that, you know, that they can gain... Uh, booty from from uh, from war captives. They'll, they'll mm -hmm. be, I think, more likely to try to capture them than to slaughter them. I'm so sorry, Dhamma. You had a question. Go ahead. Well, I was saying that you know the question that Mufti Bahab asked, and I, you know, I'm like growing up. I read and and heard audio uh, audio lectures of Sheikh Hamza. Don't you think, Sheikh, that uh, one concept that is not being taught enough? which is the foundation of submission, is the fact that Islam is rooted in love, right? It's in rooted in love for the Prophet It's rooted in love for Quran. And naturally, when you love somebody, like if someone, we love Sheikh Hamza. That's why whatever he says, you know, it's like that, the, the, the it's like that, you know, that nowadays that Sheikh Hamza, use, you use that word murid and that Sheikh, and like anything that Sheikh says, it becomes like a beautiful thing, even though like 10,000 people are saying the same thing. But... If you have love for somebody, <laughs> if you have love for somebody, that when, when that person speaks, you it's easier to di digest what that person is saying. And, uh, you know, Iqbal, you love Iqbal, um, Sheikh Hamza. He says something, um, he says a poem, he says, He says, The man who famine racks ill fears no death. Like, he's not afraid of poverty or anything. He's not afraid of poverty or anything. It doesn't scare him. If you... That person, you can't defeat him. All you have, to, all, the only thing you can do is remove the spirit of Muhammad from his body. Right. Once you do that, then you've conquered him. And I think that spirit of Muhammad, so salam, has so once nice. it's taken out from the person's body in his soul, then now, of course, now there's gonna be questions and this and yeah, that. Yeah, no, I would have totally agree with you. Love of the Prophet is the hair of Samson. Okay. Yeah. In our religion. You know, Samson, his secret was in his hair. And once once Delilah cut the hair, he, he lost all his power. Wow. So he, if, he, if, he, if, he went, if he went for Hajj, he was gone. So 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 love of the Prophet is yeah. the hair of Samson of our faith. But, but Jan, even the ayah after that where you mentioned... I mean, what did they say going into battle? Wa Muhammadah. Oh. You know, which, which really meant would that Muhammad was with us. Wow. Yeah. Sheikh, the ayah after that, Sheikh Abdullah mentions, وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنِ اقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ أَوْ اخْرُجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا بِقَلِيلٌ مِنْهُمْ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِهِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَأَشَدْ تَثْبِيتًا Like, it would have actually been better if they did something that was as irrational as leaving their families and just, you know, leaving everything behind and just killing, killing everything behind you. Uh, but even that, if it was said to us, we, we accept it. And, uh, so in our education system in America, or even in our in our in our systems of, uh, you know, Mashiach of Zaytuna, or we have whatever institution that we're trying our best to uh, follow on your footsteps, where do we add that to? The, is it just natural? Is it embedded, or is it supposed to be well, taught? Well, you know, love comes from 
from three sources, love of the Prophet him. One is knowing his sirah, knowing about him and who he was. Um, and then also knowing about his beautiful qualities and characteristics. Um, but then the third and really the most important is knowing what he did for, for you. SubhanAllah. Uh, the Prophet Sallam, if you can imagine uh, the Isra and the Mi'raj, if if you can imagine, first of all, it said Ma zaghar basur ma taga. You know, he's he's going through the heavens and 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 seeing all everything's being revealed to him, but but he's not deviating. He's not looking. He's oh, this is interesting. Oh, what's that? Oh, no, he's only thinking about God. He's not interested in all of the otherness. And, and, but then when he had, he's there with God, what he couldn't say to God, I don't want to go back. I want to stay here. You know, to go back to the world and, 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 and suffer the trials, travails, and tribulations of dunya. Wow. When you've reached the pinnacle of reality. There's nothing wow. beyond that. You know, there's nothing beyond the low tree of the furthest limit. How many even times Jibril, he... even Jibril couldn't go. So he comes back. And and you know, there's a great story about the three men in the desert who who uh, they you know, they're dying of thirst and then they come up, there's this the big walled uh, rectangle in the middle of the desert. So the first one climbs up to the top and then he just says, Allah Akbar and jumps over. And then the second one comes, climbs up and he says, SubhanAllah, jumps over. And then the third one, he wants to see where his two companions have gone. So he climbs up and sees this beautiful oasis with water and date palms. It's this incredible garden in the middle of the desert. And just as he's about to jump, he says, maybe there's some other wayfarers out there in the desert that need to find this place. I should go look for them. And that, that is the, that's the task of the teacher. Mm. That, that they, they're more concerned once they have found that place, they're mm. more concerned that others find it as well. And mm. that's why the prophet said, they come seeking, but they go out guides to what they found. And so that's the great gift of just giving back what we found. Part of what, for me, you know, when I came back to the United States, you know, alhamdulillah, all I did was share this amazing thing that I found. And, and when I came back, I found people reading all these modernist books on Islam. And I'm like, how can you read that stuff when you've got all this? I mean, <laughs> how can you read some 20th century pseudo intellectual Muslim uh, when you've got Fakhruddin al Razi and Ahmed Zarruq and Abu Hamad al Ghazali and Ibn Ajiba and all these amazing people? And I just, I just wanted to share what I had discovered uh, in the desert. People. You Here. discovered in the desert of Mauritania. In Mauritania, yeah. Well, I, I discovered it in, in in England, and then and then later in in uh, going to the Emirates and, and meeting the Mauritanian scholars there. And, but I just there were so many people like uh, like Imam, uh, you know, like this book was not very well known. You know, so this is one of the books, the Tasir Uluma Tanzir by uh, Ibn Juzay al Kelbi. You know, this is this was always was my go to tafsir. Um, so a lot of people use this now. But you know, these are treasures. Mm -hmm. They're treasures. I mean Abu Ham uh, uh, Abu Hanifa Radilanu, Imam Abu Hanifa uh, said something so amazing. When, when, he, uh, when he said, if the kings knew the, the pleasure that we were in, they would come with their armies to try to take it from us. Ibrahim, and, Ibrahim, 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 Ibrahim,
exactly yeah وجل امام شافعي سهري لتنقيح العلوم الذ لي من وصل غانية ومن طيب عناقي خلاص وتمايلي طربا لحل عويسة احلى من مدامة الساقي وابيت then he says end of the poem وابيت سهرا الدجا وتبيت يوما تبغي بعد ذلك لحاقي I think Imam Hamza can translate this better because there's drums involved and there's alcohol involved <laughs> well there's you know one of the problems uh, and Nietzsche, Nietzsche identified this the German philosopher um, one of the problems with human beings is that we have two we have two ways of being in the world You know, people were uh, wondering, like, because I started this book club, and one of the books that I wanted to read with people was a book by Jane Austen called Sense and Sensibility. You're like, why, why do you want to read Sense and Sensibility? And But part of the reason is because uh, that, that book, which is an, a beautiful book about two ways of being in the world, which, which is the way of sensibility, of feeling, of emotion, Uh, and, and the way of sense, of reason and, and logic. So you have these two wonderful characters, Marianne and Eleanor, and, and they, they're, they're in the world in these, in these two ways. But what Jane Austen is showing is that they're both important ways of being. There has to be a balance. Hmm. And, and one of the beauties of our tradition, we have Mecca, which is ecstatic. Hmm. It's, it's feeling, it's, it's powerful emotion. And then, and, then, and then we have Medina. You know, the Meccan verses are, mm. are extraordinarily uh, ecstatic verses about God and about... And then you go to Medina and there, it's, it's coming into the city. It's how do we behave with one another? It's how do we... And, and, and the bridge between those is the Isra and the Mi'raj. You know, it's going it. to, to Jerusalem and praying with all the the previous dispensations leading them in prayer but then ascending into this ecstatic journey to the lord rabbul izza so islam has mecca and medina and and it's this beautiful balance between these two ways this and that's why in mecca everything go all the men and women are mixed together and it's all there's no it's all that 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 uh, that medinan uh balance is is really displaced in a way that's quite amazing for our religion so it's all there it's, and and so out feel bad everybody's there's there's no differences here because everybody's immersed in this ocean of bewilderment in mecca But then you go to medina and no the prayer lines who got there first you know it's It's all order. So that what, what Nietzsche called Apollonian and Dionysian. The, the, the Dionysian was this ecstatic way of being in the world. And the Apollonian is this, um, this, this um, way of being in the world that's measured and, and law-based and controlled. So Islam beautifully bridges these two And, and, and welds them in a way that no other religion has done. And this is why, if you look at Christianity, it's a much more uh, Dionysian faith. And then Ju Judaism is a much more Apollonian faith. So, so the, the Christians, the, the tendency that they have is to, to, to become ecstatic and, and lose their way. Mm. You know, so Allah calls them Ba'alim, you know. And and the other way is 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 that way of of law based. Mm. Whereas in Islam we have this wonderful uh, in 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 some of the 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 uh, the, the traditions of the Qaum, they talk about mujdub salik, you know, this idea of inward ecstasy and mm. outward sobriety. Mm -hmm. And so in our culture today, you have this this Dionysian madness where everybody. There's no, there's no Apollonian uh, measurement. There's reason is being thrown out, and every it's just the rave party. The Burning Man is the great uh, expression of that madness. Mm -hmm. That's a very unhealthy sign, and and there's a great play by Euripides called the Bacchae, which 
directly deals with this problem. So, so Islam has this incredible balance. Um, so the Sufis have a tendency to become too Dionysian. That's, that's, that's when they go astray. But generally, the Sufis were extremely sober. And, and one of the problems with modern Islam is they, is they think that the, 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 this kind of um, Sufism of the tombs mm. and all these, you know, wild ripping the things and screaming and having all that this, the Sufis were, they were scholars generally, and they, and they were the most scrupulous in their adherence to the, uh, to the Sharia. They were people that really hated Bid'a. They, and that's why very early on, they were already saying there's no Sufis left. I mean, uh, in Imam al-Qushayri is saying this already. Wow. In the Risala. Oh. So, so where are we today? I mean, I have a book by Ahmed Zarruq, uh, which is a commentary on Ibn al-Bannat, uh, Serapusti's famous uh, didactic poem on the rules of, of uh, Tasawwuf. And he has the last chapter is the Sufis of our day. <laughs> and he just talks about how they're they're all astray. Wow! <laughs> but there's some there, there's some scholars they they were they're them leaving us. And then there are some scholars that were scholars of the soul, the scholars of the heart, the scholars of knowledge, insight, farsight, basira. They left us, and they. They don't do. They don't only decorate your library, but they, they fill your hearts. They their their impression is not just in speech, but in body. And that's what we're. That's what that reform. I, I, I'm not calling for. And no one's calling for a reform. I don't want to take this out of context. But that self reform is needed so much in our society because of this distraction and this delusion that we're living in. And may Allah give us that. And this. That's why. Having these discourses with people like Shaykh Hamza Yusuf, it not only does it um, make you think twice, it puts it, it challenges your trajectory. Where are you going? What are you doing with this knowledge? How much have you contemplated about this? And in, in Sheikh, everything you said requires a pen and pages to be written. It's just so much that can be in, uh, delve into. But Mufti Dohab, Mufti Dohab, you were saying something. I don't want to cut you, Mufti. Sheikh, um, you know, we th this whole conversation started with the like um, the I idea of the foundation is, of course, the love for the Prophet. Now, I remember once you mentioned this, and you're probably thinking, "What's wrong with you? You're always coding me." I'm, I'm not doing it intentionally, Sheikh. It's just that you know, growing up, we 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 uh, I never knew Urdu and never knew Arabic growing up, so we we read a lot of your speeches, and you mentioned one thing a long time ago, and I I, I kept on thinking about it, and. I think when I, I, I was just I just went for khuruj tabligh to Pakistan for 40 days with 22 people from from Michigan and we came back. As you can, tell, I, as you can tell by his big turban, Sheikh. <laughs> so <laughs> and I, I spoke about you to Sheikh Tariq Jamil. You know, we were talking there and we, we spoke while, while we were there. And I was while I was sitting in the Turkey airport while we were doing like we were reading a book together with other people, and there was extensive uh, hadith and narrations about. Al-Mawalat Fillah, like loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one after the other, like so much. And it struck to me that why is why is there so so much emphasis on loving each other so much? And your your words echoed in my ear that today we have lost the capacity of even loving. That's why we can't even love the Prophet. So if we have a hard time loving the one in front of us who's doing good for us, who's wow. taking care of us. Who is like the person right in front of you? So how can you love someone in in, in his absence, which is the Prophet So you're if once you start loving people around you that do good for you, and that are nice to you, and then you start loving them, you start caring for them. Autumn, what's slowly going to happen is your love for the Prophet will increase, and it, it goes from Malla Mishkud Nas to Mishkud And that's what I started thinking. That that's why there's so much. I read a statement: Hakikatul Muhabba. And I could not understand Like the essence of muhabba Love by Imam Makhul He says Is that it does not increase With someone doing good to you right. Nor does it increase If someone gives you a cold shoulder Because you've reached that essence of love now It doesn't well, decrease Yeah, And that's very important That you point that out about essence Because The Prophet said The reason he's Rahmal al-Alameen Is because he saw the essence Mm -hmm. of things 
he didn't see uh, he wasn't uh, lost as most people are in al hakam al takathur which could one of the meanings of that i mean obviously the meaning of takathuruna al amwal and things like that but one of the meanings is that takathur this multiplicity has you bedazzled oh my god and 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 so hatta zurtum al maqabir when when you visit the grave um, all of that waham ma qada kashiun mithl al waham you know as ibn atayla mm-hmm. says nothing will uh, lead you on more than your own delusion so people when when they don't see the essence of things they they they're caught in the the outward illusion of it if they listen to the dictates of iblis then they become deluded about them so it moves from an illusion to a delusion and 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 iblis is called the gharur right allah tells us not to be deluded by the deluder mm. cuz he will delude you and one of the things he'll delude you about is about human beings he'll convince you that not only you're bad but human beings are bad that he'll hmm. create one of the things now about this whole thing about racism you know that people are just racists people aren't racists people people to tell to say that is is to create despair in people well, yeah and it's not true uh in fact people many many people uh have fought against uh tribalism the prophet mm-hmm. islam came to take these things out of the world to get to the essence of things and so when you see each human being as as a creation of allah you begin to love that creation of god and you can even love the most odious of god's creation in in a, in a way that, that that enables you to see the gift and the light of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that creation that allah has created it so everything has a purpose even the worst of people on this planet have a purpose mm-hmm. there's nothing allah didn't create anything without purpose and so once you see that that everything has purpose everything has meaning it becomes an enriching experience and it doesn't limit you and that's why you can even handle people abusing you and mm-hmm. it's not like we we're not masochists if we can mm-hmm. if we can prevent people from abusing us we should yeah. and, and that's why self defense is a, is it not only a islamic right it's a fundamental human right but if you're in a situation where somebody's abusing you the people that really are with god know that this is a tribulation from god i mean wow. one of my favorite chapters in in the quran is surah ibrahim wow that chapter every time i re- come to that chapter you know on just moving through the quran i get excited every time because i love that chapter there's just so that and that chapter you know i had this kind of realization of the the perfection of that chapter in a way that i hadn't realized in other parts of the quran but i really saw and same with qadaf al mu'minun also which which it was to, I don't know how you, you know, do, do you read with the lunar moon? Do you read with the lunar calendar? No. In Morocco, they have this nice tradition where you read uh, based on the lunar calendar. So you begin the khatam uh, on the first day of the lunar month. Um, so you always know what Jews you're in. You know what day it is. SubhanAllah. So like tonight's the 18th night because it's, it's the 18th just we, we are we even us the abundance are going calculation mode now <laughs> i know i'm disappointed with you I'm just, we're, we're, we're not, just, not gonna have you holding that flag by yourself we're gonna be right by you gonna, gonna, i know gonna, well i you know i call the like people like imam Tahir neo bandis <laughs> No, no, we're we're not gonna let you down on that. You're not gonna. You have. You have you Imam Sheikh Hamza has a book on calculation and, and uh, um the lunar and um. It was a strong argument. Like yeah. I, people, I always ask you, did you really read it? Did you really read it? Yeah. No, I just saw it on Amazon. I didn't even read because it. Because I asked one Imam, I won't say who it is, because you'd know him. 
Um, because he was saying, no, 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 calculations. And I said, did you read my book? He said, yeah, yeah, I read your book. I said, did you really, did you read it? He said, yeah. About six months later, he called me up. We need to talk to Isna. I said, what? He said, they need to stop calculation. I said, well, why are you saying that? He said, I just finished your book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you went so, the back of it. You went the back of it. I have a funny story about a book of yours. So like one of our, once, you know, one like, so-called internet student we knew him like you know he just learns online the google guy so he gave a khutbah somewhere and he was he basically wrote down your khutbah and he was basically saying what you said right that's dangerous <laughs> you could, you could, that's dangerous that's dangerous you could get kicked off the stage or loved by many <laughs> okay so no so it's fine if you do that but you know you recommended a book in that in, in that speech so he basically quoted you and he's not saying your name he said yeah so i read this book and it's an amazing book, and you guys should read this book, right? So one person who is a friend of mine, he says he's I a professor at this, you know, at this at this university. He says I go up to him, I say, man, I'm I'm amazed that you you're a young man and you you've come across this book. He didn't the, the kid didn't realize that the book you're referencing was a college textbook, not just a <laughs> regular book. So so he said <laughs> so he said um so you know what do you like about the book? So he's like because he's saying I read this book and he said oh yeah it's a good book and he says. Do, do you you know it's a textbook, right? It's not like a book. Have you even seen this book before? And he says, no, no, I haven't seen it, but you know, I've I've heard. So he said, why are you saying this in your khutbah? So Sheikh Hamza, you know, I'm sure people are you just there's no copywriting in Deen, but I think they should at least acknowledge that someone else is saying, I read this book and you should read this book. So the same thing with the lunar book of yours. Uh, my brother, my brother, he has he knows the titles of all books and the in the Which author, brother? he knows Which brother? how to which brother? My older brother, Jazakallah. He knows the title. Me? Yeah, he knows the title, oh, the author, like, and the color. Yeah. He has his book. I have this book right here from Good to Great by Carl. Yeah, I, I actually had that, yeah. All right, so he I, has... So he's reading that, and I'm reading this. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't... I'm glad you guys are reading... Uh, the, those are important things. Mm. Sheikh, what do you think? We only read Hayat al Sahaba and Fadal al I mean, Fadali Amal. you know, Fadal al Amal is a great little work, you know, and I, I've always felt it should be um, retypeset and published properly because it's. You should do it. Sheikh, you should do it. You know, every once in a while, I actually look at that book and there's the hadith in there are so beautiful. There's so many wonderful treasures in that book, you know. Sheikh, you should do it. I, you know, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but Dr. Winter, myself, and I think Dr. Omar Abdullah Farooq as well. We all, I first went through Jama'at Tabligh, you know, we went out with them and and I benefited a lot. And that oh, book. How many, how many days did you go, Sheikh? I, you know, I never did like the 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 four months. But <laughs> you don't need to. I know my four months, but I. I've done so much uh, traveling that I think it I can fulfill the requirement. But you don't, got, you don't get that they're bad yet. <laughs> I, but you know no, what? That, that book is a wonderful book. You know, sure, really sure, you know mo, mo, I mean, I think it's been so long. Most people probably don't even know the entire story. I know it's late. Majan uh, and Musulman, I think someone has a go. But well, sure. you're, 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 you're becoming Muslim, Majan. Sheikh Hamza is three hours back. I know, but... <laughs> is this, don't hold them too long, Mijan. Uh, Sheikh, if, if it was up to us, we would have you for the next forever, right? Um, but just a few rapid fire questions because Sheikh was rubbing his eyes. Um, he's probably tired of us. He's like, these guys, these brothers are on here for too long and talking too much. But Sheikh, you already answered the first one. My question is going to be the favorite surah. Your surah Ibrahim. Right? No, I, I mean, I, my favorite surah is whichever one I'm reading. <laughs> but I, I do love, uh, I, I love that surah Ibrahim. Oh, you know what I was going to say about it? Is that is that one of the most powerful verses in there is about Moses telling them, you know, when he reminds them about, and then it says that, you know, that Pharaoh, what he did to them, you, you know, uh, you you yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's 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 a reminder that that was not Pharaoh. That was a tribulation from your Lord. Wow. And and people forget that you know that 
they just forget everything's from God. Even Pharaoh. People just forget that. It, it becomes easier to deal with when you have that understanding. Then you don't become blameworthy. Like you don't start blaming God for situations. Then you start looking at each situation as a learning process. It's a learning, course. exactly. And it's all from God. And and once you see that, that's why the prophesize him, he was always in that mode. You know, mm-hmm. he was in that mode of just seeing everything as from his Lord. Mm-hmm. All of the tribute. And that's why, you know, my favorite dua is the dua of Ta'if. When he comes oh. out of Ta'if and says that amazing dua, you know, in a man takiluni. You know. That dua is painful, Sheikh. If you start that dua, it's Syria, an incredible you know. dua. And but but he said, you know, in them to in them you kun ghadabuk alayya fala ubali. You know, as long as you're not upset with me, I don't mind if you if you want to send these people to torture me and punish me, I. If it's from you, and th- and that's Haja when she says to Ibrahim when when he's leaving her in the middle of the desert, abandoning like in modern terms it would be like a husband abandoning his wife and child in 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 the middle of the desert, and she asks him, "Is this from your Lord?" And he says, "Yes." Then she 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 she, she it's good. Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Wahab, I mean, this session has been way too overwhelming for me. I'm enjoying this so much, Sheikh. I, if you ask me, I will have you all night, Sheikh Hamza. And and alhamdulillah, we have you as as a scholar, mentor, and leader for our community. We, we, we do want, we, exactly. We do want, we do want, we do want Sheikh Hamza to accept an invite again next time, or else. I don't think, I don't think he is because we took so long. So let's just ask him all the questions now. Oh, no. Mufti go ahead. Jeff, Jeff, I was just gonna. I mean, I think um, I, I want to allow Sheikh Hamza for a few few moments before he leaves, just to tell us about um, a how Zaytuna came about and what is the next. What is what is his Sheikh? Wallahi, one of my personal pet peeve questions is: What's your next ambition? What's your next um, you know plan? Or, or is what's the next plan for your college? Well, I mean, obviously. You all are running an academy, so you know that um, you know funds are very important. So just an endowment's really important. So in terms of my role as president, I'm hoping in whatever time I have left in that position, you know, to secure a good endowment for the college. And then we have projects there that we're working on. But my my real interest is in creating a K through twelve curriculum for Muslim schools. Wow. Uh, because wow. The, the the Muslim schools are generally substandard. Um, and I think we have an immense opportunity. I, I was saying back in the 90s that I don't consider it permissible to send uh, Muslim children to non-Muslim schools. And, and that's not, that's Imam Madik said that. Uh, Yusuf Nebahani has a fatwa a hundred years ago about Tahrim Ba'ath Awlad al Muslimin ila Madaris al Nasara. Can't remember what he called it. Um, but now, with the critical theory, with neo Marxist ideas that have completely infiltrated um, education, even at the lower levels. So they're getting these things now in, in middle school and high school and certainly in college. So if Muslims go through uh, college, they're going to come out thinking socialism is the answer to all the world's problems. Uh, and we have many scholars wrote against socialism uh, in the Muslim world 100 years ago. I have a book um, by... Oh, hold on. <laughs> like I'm going to ask you how to just grab a book one by one. Bajan, 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 just relax, okay? Don't say too much. Don't give me more books. He's gonna, he's gonna be hard for I know that's, I know that's the only book you got on your bookshelf right now. <laughs> Brother Ben, I'll pull up books right and left. Got books in my pocket. <laughs> Islam versus socialism. Wow. 
this is wow. actually a really good little book, but it's uh, it was published by in, in Lahore by that Sheikh Mohammed Asharaf, but it's by Mirza Mohammed Hussein, and you know he it's really good. I I I I mean I read this pretty thoroughly, you know, a couple of times. Yeah. You can see you, un you underlined the whole book, Sheikh. Yeah, no, I, I I gave it a good read, but but it's a. Uh, it's a very useful little book because it shows you how, when these ideas showed up, how Muslims looked at them. When was this book written, Sheikh? He wrote it in first published 1947. Wow. So he's got the human situation, war on wage slavery, private ownership and social welfare, balanced society, economics and religion, the golden calf. And then, uh, you know, he, it's very interesting. Sheikh, you, you see us three right here. So, so Sheikh, you definitely read the first 5,000 years of debt, that book. I have that, yeah. How is that? That's an important book. I mean, yeah. my, you know. Yeah, Sheikh, you don't have oh, you just to keep planning. Camera. The, that, these are my economic books. Okay. So here's here's uh, the first five thousand. You're, you're, you're gonna have to slow down on us. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. But then I'm sure you never read it. You just heard the title somewhere and you just asked. This, this is a really good book here, Thomas Sowell, Basic Economics. Uh, how about how about Islam and economics in the West? Do you have something on that? Uh, this is all. Uh, this is all Islam and economics. This whole shelf. Subhanallah. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's all Marxism and anyway. So very how do you build it? How, how do you build the, the the appetite to can read more and more? Like how, how does that happen? You just you just start reading and you. Well, I mean, I have I have certain interests. So <laughs> economics is one of my interests. Uh, law, obviously. Uh, philosophy, ethics, uh, moral philosophy is very important. Political philosophy is important. Um, medicine's an interest of mine. Um, and mathematics is an interest. So those are those are the areas. You mentioned all the subjects. You didn't, you didn't leave any. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're like, it's like saying, okay. uh, it's, like, it's like asking Michael Jordan, what's your weakness? <laughs> No, no, no. I, you know, I mean, some of the things I'm a real dilettante in them, but they interest me. And, and then other things I think, you know, I've, I've done serious stuff. education. I mean, I have a lot of books on education. In education, Sheikh, if we we're part of schools and trying to learn like yourself, what, what would be one book you would tell us to read? Uh, no Kastin is really good. The, uh, the Mahdi No Kastin, uh on the Islamic origins of Western education. Very good book. Um, also, George Mukdesi, The Rise of Colleges, very important. Um, and then there's some really good books on liberal arts. Uh, one of the most important ones, I think, is Mark Van Doren's book called Liberal Education. Um, there's, uh, uh, there's a good book that uh, the Mormons published on Islamic treatises on education. Wow. So yeah. you, you all can read Arabic. So uh, uh, Muhammad ibn Sahnoon's book is very important on education, Tarbiyat al-Subyan is really important. And I think that's been translated into English as well. Um, uh, obviously, um, Imam al-Ghazali on education. There, there's a good book on the, his uh, Ghazali's theory of education, which uh, brings out all, because he wrote, he never, he didn't re write anything specific, but he has a lot of educational theory throughout his works. Um, so there's a lot to gain there. Um, and, and he really understood Tarbiyat al-Awlad, Imam al-Ghazali. I mean, he has some really good advice about um, Tarbiyat al-Awlad. Sheikh, um, uh, um, well, Sheikh, normally, you know, normally people ask, but let me ask one question, Sheikh. Yeah, I, I, normally I, I, people ask. Sheikh Hamza doesn't have time for TV. He doesn't watch movies. And he doesn't, do you play golf, Sheikh? You know, I... Uh, I I, my dad was a my dad was on the Columbia University golf team, so my dad was a great golfer. And my dad actually, I got I got golf lessons uh, when I was young, um, 
and and I was actually a, a very good golfer. But when I became Muslim, I I gave up golfing. So you you up, a, I played a, about I played about four times. A lot of Muslims golf, um, and and uh, so I have played about four or five times since I became Muslim. And I was always surprised that I actually did pretty relatively well because. I, you know, I learned it very young, and and I was a good golfer when I was in high school. So, what is your what is your interest outside of like the mabah, like the the, um, the uh, the things that are mabah, like like hobbies and stuff like that? Because, I mean, I'm sure like we are we're into sports, so we spend a lot of time playing ice hockey and playing basketball, and it takes away from what we're doing. Yeah, but it gives those, energy I mean, too. Those are really good sports. Um, I like. Uh, I mean, I obviously. Probably my biggest, uh, but I walk. I try to walk every day. Uh, so and I go for long walks. Um, you can think a lot when you're walking. Uh, and I, I listen to uh, I listen to a lot of lectures. Is that us? Um, um, can you start Is that she? So I think we. We have to thank Sheikh for the time that he's taken out. So much time he's taken out of his precious schedule. Um, uh, Hawking is a scholar. I, I think we just got Sheikh Hamza froze. You know what Sheikh Hamza is trying to tell us indirectly? That you took all my evening. Yeah, I want to share just, just, um, just this link right here. That um, Zaytuna, um, the, the team, um, very nicely um, put together for us. May Allah reward Mr. Aisha Subhani, the Vice President of Zaytuna, for um, putting this together and setting it up for us. And I, I think I've been in contact with her for one year, um, just trying to get, um, have Sheikh join us. Uh, and they wanted, they, 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 I asked them, if, rather than asking Sheikh all the details about Zaytuna and the great work they're doing, um, we rather just join a call with the team and they can explain to us on a separate call. So we've shared a link and this link pretty much summarizes and so will be a, a live session with the Zaytuna team where they will talk about their institution and the details of what they do and how they run their college and the difference the, the differences between their curriculum and all other curriculums that are out there right now. Um, I will be on the call myself and I'm encouraging everyone to join the call. We have more than 1,300, 1,400 people watching right now. Uh, please try to join the call. It's a free uh, session that they're, they're, that they're, they're going to have in, re in regards to Zaytuna curriculum. Uh, also, Bajan, before we leave, I really wanted just to share this video. I was really, I really enjoyed this video um, that Zaytuna made. And um, I want to share this, if we have a second, just to watch one of their uh, trailers on what they do. Uh, Sheikh Hamza is back. Okay, we can, yeah. Sorry, Sheikh. I I'll share the trailer later. I apologize. Uh, May Allah bless all of you and increase you and protect your um, organization. Inshallah, give you lots of openings. Alhamdulillah. So, so Shaykh, we're, we're going to come see you in the Bay Area if Allah allows us and you give us permission, Inshallah, very soon, Inshallah. Marhaban. Welcome. Come, come see the school, Inshallah. We will. Inshallah, we will. Inshallah, we will. Um, Shaykh, we are, Wallahi, we're uh, honored to have you again. We apologize if anything, we took you beyond the time. Really apologize, Shaykh. Well, you know, when you have all th three of us on one screen and you have yourself, you're like, you're, you are our teacher. So whenever our teacher comes, we just, just send so many questions his way. Uh, and so uh, if, if there was any disrespect in that, we do apologize. But it was an honor for us to have you with us. Inshallah, we'll see you in person soon. And it would be an honor for you, for us, if you can actually visit our campus and, and see our students, inshallah, one day as well. I'm going to share the video, inshallah. Okay, yeah, if you can share the video. Is there audio to this? Yeah. I believe so. I will, I believe the audio doesn't share through StreamYard, so I'm actually going to copy the link and uh, put it here. So inshallah, everyone can... Um, if you haven't got a chance to go to Zaytuna's YouTube page or their Facebook page, go ahead, please check it out. Inshallah, I put the link on the bottom, um, and you can just definitely um, press the link, watch the video. 
join uh, the, the Zoom call. That I shared that link above as well. Inshallah, I think people will really benefit from it and uh, you will enjoy what Zaytuna is doing. Inshallah, hopefully in the future we can have more future uh, you know, sessions with Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and perhaps you know, collaborations with Zaytuna if, if Allah allows us. First, Rahman and Jones can be someone like Hamza Yusuf on screen. We'll have to do that again. Yeah. Jonathan, yeah. your internet's a little disconnected, but we were only able to get Mufid Rahman and join because Sheikh Hamza was on, or else he doesn't join us. I just got to say one thing, Bajan. Like, all those, like, when you start throwing those book names out there, you stop writing because, and I think you already read all those books. Like, you already got them down. I have them. I wrote them down. I think so one of the things I learned is that when an elder is speaking, is not to write because. Because you want to give the, the elder you want to give the respect. Respect. And I wanted to write. I have I have a I have a pad right here. And you know, I could I I you know I could take the notes. No, but you're right, it's a skill and not, not to make him feel like you're not listening to him. Yeah, listening. because I didn't want to look down and write when Sheikh was speaking. So this stuff but is yeah, already but, yeah, uh, but I gotta tell you something, but alhamdulillah, like you, you know, like it's we were you made him laugh, you know. That's I got. You, I gotta give it to you about that. You know, you. I wasn't laughed. trying to make you laugh. It's just natural. You just, you just na you're natural. natural, right? natural all natural. No, uh, um, he was. It was such such a such an honor to have him on on our on our Miftah page, and and you know getting to know him at a personal level, him getting up and showing us his library was a highlight for me. You know, yeah, I don't think he would is, do that for the, someone. The thing, is, Bujan, the thing is, like, you know, people. I mean, of course, when we were growing up for ourselves, like people that were like holy, knowledgeable, they're like they're like untouchables. It's hard to know who they are. You just sort of move away from them, and like, oh, this is hard to get. You know, I think what you guys—I'm not saying I'm miftah, but what we have done is like we made knowledge more uh, accessible, and like people like Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. I'll tell you something. All the guys are watching today, like. I mean, if if you aspire to get anything in life, like if it's if it's if it's a sincere approach, and you're doing it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah will make things easy for you. You know, we always wanted to um, benefit from Sheikh Hamza, see him, talk, talk to him. I mean, it's it seemed like it's going to be something. You know, when we were growing up, impossible. Like we we're hearing him from an audio tape or like a CD. No, we're not that old. We're not listening to audio tapes. I mean, you can't. I mean, that's that's audio. So no, yeah, I'm twenty. I'm twenty three years old. You know, so we saw videos too. But no, really, but I feel like, um, first of all, I want to thank the Zaytuna team, um, Dr. Sitar Aisha, awesome. the Vice President. Um, I think literally I've never been um, so persistent and stubborn for a speaker in my life like Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. And I, I appreciate that she was able to handle my stubbornness and persistence. And throughout the one year, or actually more than one year, uh, I'll reward her, bless her, bless her team. Really, inshallah, hopefully this is the beginning of uh, of something, I'm not saying we're gonna have him on more often, but if Allah allows the beginning of something more, that we're able to have him on more and more. And until then, inshallah, bless with Sheikh Abdullah and Rahman. You guys share enough wisdom as well. Honestly, I, I was telling Mufti Abdul Wahab that I was more excited having Sheikh Hamza on tonight from Iftar than Khabib joining us in person on Tuesday. Like, I know um, Khabib is a great uh, MMA fighter, UFC champion, but you know, he's a champion, he's a, he's a great icon, but like. For, for us students of knowledge, we, we really benefit from people like Sheikh Hamza and, you know, these scholars much. Allah keep him healthy. Allah keep him healthy and give him a lot of life. his life and his health. Uh, but when you said that, you remind me of Khabib. So I'm sure the link over here. Uh, we have online seats available. Oh, yeah. Wherever you're watching, please join us, inshallah. It's only a few days away, um, inshallah, on Tuesday. Please make dua for the event. And mm -hmm. if that goes smooth, uh, inshallah, people benefit from that event as well. And if you're in Michigan, I think maybe a few... 50, 60 seats are left. Uh, inshallah, you're able to join, bring your family, your friends. Um, we want to, inshallah, show Khabib also, um, our institution, our, our attendees, our um, students, and inshallah, allow him to keep coming back again and again to if possible. Allah bless you all, inshallah. Zakhul um, khair, Bajan. Inshallah, call it a night. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for organizing uh, the collaboration with uh, Zaytuna and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Sister Aisha. May Allah bless him, her and her family and Sheikh Hamza and his family. And may Allah put so much more barakah and benefit to the Ummah through Zaytuna Institute and Miftah Institute. Mufti Dawha, Mufti Abdurrahman. All the audience that joined us tonight, may Allah bless you guys all, accept all your du'as and increase you in knowledge and in action and save us from the trials of this world and akhirah. And also, once before, before we leave, inshallah, that link that we shared about the um, Zaytuna orientation, inshallah, if anyone wants to share it with their family and friends, feel free to share it with other people as well. 
Uh, I just shared the link for the Tuesday program. It's miftah.org slash Khabib. Uh, inshallah, please check it out and share it with your family and friends. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.